So basically between the ages of zero to seven, that's basically when we kind of um, develop all of our beliefs about ourselves and how we um, are going to live uh, based off of those beliefs for the rest of our lives. And most of us don't realize that, you know, um, when we're a child, we kind of pick up things like inherently uh, without realizing the impact that they have on our lives. So, you know, I say that every adult is basically living off of like a, the mindset of a seven-year-old because we form these beliefs when we're really young and they're still impacting our lives, but we don't realize that until we um, do what I do, which is, you know, regression therapy where we go back into these memories and link together how they created a certain belief that you have now that might be holding you back. Hey guys, uh, Mike Sigula here from truththeory.com and this is our first episode of Truth Theory Podcast and I'm here with Julia Wang from the Dream Life Foundation. She's a life coach and rapid transformational therapy practitioner and she's also launching her new book called Awaken the Hero Within, a practical guide for tapping into your limitless potential. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. That was quite the introduction. Um, I'm super excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for, um, you know, sharing what you're going to share with us. Um, maybe you could start by just telling us a little bit about your background and how did you become interested in personal development? Sure. Um, so basically, um, this is also a story that I cover in my book, but basically I suffered um, from depression for like quite a few years of my life. So that was kind of um, the beginning of when I got into self-development because I didn't want to um, use medications or go see a psychologist. I kind of just sought out um, help, help through books and um, like self-development resources. And um, what was like the process like? What kind of books you started reading at the beginning? Um, so I think I mentioned this before um, during one of our talks, but The Power of Now was the most um, influential book on my life, I would say, just because it kind of, you know, expands your perspective on being present and how we um, oftentimes are so focused on the past and living in the future that we're not just really being in the present moment. And that's why so many of us are unhappy. Um, and how did you get into uh, becoming a practitioner of rapid transformational therapy? And maybe you can explain a little bit what is rapid transformational therapy? Yeah, so basically um, I was working as a psychiatric nurse and I kind of felt like I was working with, um, you know, a lot of patients, but I didn't have time to work with them on one on one. So I wanted to find something that I could do where I could work with clients um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and basically I was looking at life coaching programs at the time and actually found Marissa Peer who's the founder of Rapid Transformational Therapy and um, when I discovered her program I basically was sold on it. Um, I learned about hypnotherapy, I did a lot of research on it and that's basically how I got started. So um, Rapid Transformational Therapy is basically a modality that, com uh, that combines um, hypnotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, as well as neurolinguistic programming. So it utilizes all of the best practices of these different uh, modalities and combines it into one therapy, which is why it's so, um, you know, powerful as a therapy. Um, and from what I understand, a lot of our challenges and things you work with are related to our childhood. So maybe can you explain a little bit how this whole process works? Um, yeah, so basically between the ages of zero to seven, that's basically when we kind of um, develop all of our beliefs about ourselves and how we um, are going to live uh, based off of those beliefs for the rest of our lives. And most of us don't realize that, you know, um, when we're a child, we kind of pick up things like inherently 
uh, without realizing the impact that they have on our lives. So, you know, I say that every adult is basically living off of like a, the mindset of a seven year old because we form these beliefs when we're really young and they're still impacting our lives, but we don't realize that until we um, do what I do, which is, you know, regression therapy, where we go back into these memories and link together how they created a certain belief that you have now that might be holding you back. Yeah, um, so I want to share something, but we actually tried rapid transformational therapy on myself uh, recently. And one of the things that we wanted to focus on was uh, my fear of public speaking and, you know, confidence that I always had some issues with. And the interesting thing is that during the session, during like this half hypnosis state, the images that came from my childhood were all kind of related to that one thing of appearing in front of other people. So, for example, um, one of the things was, you know, when I was a child, a lot of people would think I'm a girl and I felt quite embarrassed. Maybe that was when I was five or something like that. And that was the first image that came um, during the session, which is interesting because, you know, all the other situations that were coming up were all related to the same thing of being embarrassed in front of other people as a child. Uh, you know, another example, I think it was something we, we kind of done some naughty thing in the kindergarten with a friend and then, uh, you know, we get kind of in front of the whole group. We They took us out and the ladies said something about what we have done. We actually, you know, we did some we stole some items or something like that. Mm -hmm. So all these situations show you, um, you know, how each time when you were a child, you were af afraid of uh, embarrassed of yourself. And that's a really interesting thing, how it actually is linked to my fear of public speaking throughout my life. Yeah, so I think basically what we uncovered during the session was that there was a common theme of um, you feeling like you couldn't be your authentic self because every time you were, you got shamed for it. And so, you know, as you know, a child, I think you're between the ages of like three to seven in the scenes that came up. Basically, you picked up this belief that like, no, I can't be myself. I can't show myself to the world because then people are going to judge me and I'm going to feel ashamed. So the pain of, you know, that rejection um, causes you to have this fear because the fear keeps you safe. And that's basically what your subconscious is trying to do. It's trying to protect you whether you realize it or not. Um, can you share any other interesting stories from um, maybe some clients or some problems that you help them to solve? Uh, what are like the typical uh, issues that people have these days? Sure. Um, so recently I've been working a lot with um, business owners and entrepreneurs. And I think a common theme that a lot of people come in for is um, something like procrastination. And basically, when you look at procrastination, it's, um, you know, something that we do to avoid doing what we want to do, basically, so that we don't have to avoid the pain of, again, being rejected. So, um, you know, if you're just starting to grow a business or something like that, you might be procrastinating, um, not just because there's so many tasks, but because, like, if you are actually taking all the action steps and everything, like, where that could lead you to, um, for one, you could, you know, be really putting yourself out there and, you know, you could be judged for it by your friends and family or, you know, people could reject your idea, like things like that. So, um, you know, with procrastination, it kind of comes back to, again, that fear of rejection, but also there's a portion of it that is um, about not feeling like you're good enough to put yourself out there. So I think this is a common theme. Um, not only for procrastination, but a lot of the general 
um, clients that come to me, like a lot of people have this deep-rooted belief that they're not good enough. So when they um, believe this, anything that they do is never going to be good enough because they have this deep-rooted belief that they're not enough. So they kind of always operate from this mentality. And even if they're becoming successful to some degree, they can also sabotage it because they feel like they're not good enough. And you think that um, this belief is um, also part of confidence? Like if you can erase or work on that side, um, the confidence is also uh, automatically increasing? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, working on a couple of different beliefs, like feeling like you're good enough, feeling like you're worthy of success or love or um, money, whatever it is, like all of this combines together to help you build that confidence to move to the next level in your life. Um, and confidence is the basis of everything, right? Like when you're confident in yourself and who you are, you can um, be more creative and make more of an impact in whatever it is that you do and um, like the whole idea is that all these uh, beliefs we formed as a child right it's all coming from the childhood all the behaviors we manifest as adults are linked to uh, some kind of events from childhood right yeah typically they are um, but sometimes the clients will regress back to scenes in um, their adult life so majority of the time it's some belief that already formed between the ages of zero and seven but that doesn't like exclude the beliefs that continue to form throughout your life okay and um what about your book um what made you to write it and what's the theme of the book um, so basically, I got inspired to write my book um, because of my own uh, journey of suffering from depression and basically overcoming it. And the basis of the book is The Hero's Journey, which is um, a common template in mythology where a hero basically like feels lost in the beginning and then he embarks on a journey, which then he um, kind of develops his skills, learns about himself, and then he returns back home, kind of transform into the hero that he was meant to be anyways. So it's really, um, you know, this concept that there's a hero within you already, and it's just waiting to be um, unleashed, and you just have to tap into that potential. Um, so you think that this concept of hero's journey it was also present in the way your life unfolded um, it was linked or yeah so basically um i think the hero's journey it doesn't just apply to you know your entire life but it could be broken down into um, each like milestone almost so for me the depression was like one huge milestone and that was like a completion of one cycle of the hero's journey but the hero's journey can repeat itself as you um, learn and grow and, you know, um, expand yourself. So for me, the depression basically was like me starting as this girl who was really depressed, really lost and confused in her life. And then I started my self-discovery journey, which is basically me embarking on this journey of uncovering the depths of who I am. And then um, the last stage is basically returning home um, like kind of rebirth into this new person but also the person that I was already it's basically like connecting to my higher self and who I was already but just remembering that you know I'm not the depression like I'm this person who is capable of doing so many things um, and I don't have to be limited by that depression okay so like the, the idea is just to share your story with others and how you got transformed from someone who was severely depressed into someone who is now helping other people overcoming their own challenges. Yeah, so it's basically um, not just sharing my story. My story is just part of it, but the book is meant to be like a practical guide for anyone who wants to um, take their life to the next level and you know uncover their limiting beliefs as well as build new coping skills so that they can tap into their fullest potential. So um, there's a ton of really like great exercises that I learned along my journey that I included in the book to help people kind of... Um, 
reevaluate their life and how they got to where they are now and how they can, you know, basically rewrite their own story and transform into the hero within. Maybe you can share an example of a technique or exercise that someone could use um, that you're, you know, you're writing about in your book. Yeah, um, so one of my favorite exercises is basically, um, you know, writing down your limiting beliefs. So any um, thing that you feel like is holding you back, you just like grab a piece of paper and pen and write down like any of these thoughts like that you have about yourself that are negative because we tend to kind of, um, you know, focus on all of the neg negative qualities and we don't focus on our positive qualities. So when you write out this list, you're... Um, cultivating awareness around what you're thinking and what you're telling yourself on a daily basis. And then you can just cross out those limiting beliefs and then rewrite them into more positive, affirming beliefs that you can live by. And then you can use these new beliefs to, um, you know, repeat to yourself on a daily basis to kind of just reframe your mindset. Because like I said, people are typically focused on the negative beliefs and thoughts that they have. They don't even think about the possibility that something could be um, uh, wrong. Like they never think about their beliefs and where they came from or, you know, how they came about. Um, okay, so let's take an example of my limiting belief. Um, I'm a poor public speaker. I know English is not my first language, so I always have it as an excuse. Dyslexia is, you know, I'm dyslexic, so I always had issues with pronunciation, writing, and language, and all these kind of things. So, you know, what would be, um, how, how would you work around with, with this technique, with my belief? So basically, I think the belief that we uncovered for you was that, you know, it's not safe for me to be authentic and be me because I will feel ashamed um, because people will judge me or make fun of me or whatever. So basically, you could write that out like, you know, I believe that um, people will judge me for me being who I really am. And then you kind of mark that out and then think about like, what is an alternative solution to that? So is that really the truth? Or is it something you just, you know, picked up when you were younger? So then you reframe it into something maybe like, um, I, when I was a child, I believed that it wasn't safe to be me, but I'm an adult now. That's not me anymore. I get to choose who I want to be and how I show up. And that doesn't mean that people are going to reject me. Because if you think about that, like, that belief was true to you and your mind, but if you question it, is it really true or is it just something that is a figment of your imagination and you thinking about worst case scenarios? Hmm. Um, what about, you know, someone has actually, I don't know, someone is a beast and that's tangible, you know, it's like it might damage their self-image for example someone is a what obese obese yeah uh -huh. what would you say um to a person who, who you know tries to transform their belief about it i mean i think there's definitely a lot of factors that go into it um when i've worked with patients who were overweight usually the weight is a protection mechanism in some sort of way um, we won't get into that too much today but basically the first thing is, you know, working on their self-love and the beliefs that they have around their self-image, their body weight and what it means to be them. Yeah, it's funny how a lot of these issues that are limiting beliefs or this, um, you know, internal critic that we have is actually linked to self-love, right? Mm -hmm. It's, would you say that uh, self-love is actually like the basis of all the criticism we create around ourselves? Yeah, I definitely think so. So I think when we grow up, you know, as children, we're um, kind of like little sponges and we're taking in all of this information and we can't really um, decipher what's really true or what's not true. And so that's why we pick on these beliefs. 
Um, and if we're growing up in an environment where we're not taught to love ourselves and embrace who we are, then we develop this voice of the inner critic, which is actually a protection mechanism. Because as a child, you're not capable of processing these um, emotions. You know, you don't really understand like why things are happening the way they are. So then um, you have to figure out some way to protect yourself. And that's basically where, you know, the voice of the inner critic comes in. Um, but then that voice, like, even though it thinks it's protecting you, it's not. So, you know, I think the self-love journey is like a lifelong process. We're always constantly learning to, you know, love ourselves again. And, um, it's something that we have to work on consistently. And, um, what other things you mentioned in the book, apart from like, you know, relating to your life story, some exercises, um, what what kind of exercises, what, what other types of exercises you... So there's a lot list. of um, different exercises um, and they're broken into basically the three stages of the hero's journey, um, which is the first one is uh, separation, which is basically, you know, um, figuring out uh, who you are and discovering yourself and you know, um, kind of just building that awareness around where you are right now and where you want to go. And um, the second phase is basically the initiation phase. This is when you kind of, you know, start this new adventure, whether it's like a new job, new career, um, moving across town, so things like that. So what would be uh, like an example of someone trying to figure out who they are? Like, you mean they don't understand their life purpose or, you know, they hate their job or their relationship or something like that they're trying to figure out a better way of living yeah um i mean for me it came in this little voice of like there has to be like much more to life than this right now because i was working as a nurse mm -hmm. where i felt like you know um my job was fulfilling but it wasn't to the degree that i wanted it to be so i kind of did you know um the traditional route of going to school getting a job having a career becoming a nurse, which is what I thought I wanted to do for, you know, a long time. And that's kind of what my family ingrained on me, like go to school, be a doctor, um, you know, things like that. And um, at one point in my nursing career, I was like, this can't be it. Like there has to be something more. And I want to be able to work with people on a one to one basis where I can make like an even huger impact on their life. So yeah, I mean, people could be experiencing this phase in a lot of different areas. It could um, come as like this underlying unhappiness, basically. So like, you know, you're kind of just going through day to day life, but you feel kind of unhappy. You don't really feel fulfilled and you just feel like there's something else out there for me. Like I'm meant to be doing something else. Um, and, you know, learning about yourself is also like learning what you like, what you don't like. Um, you know, like, uh, like what you mentioned, what your life purpose is. I think that was like a key changer for me in my life as well. Yeah, so that's like s extremely important, I think, for everyone really to first discover who they are, what they really want to do and not what someone else tells them. Like we often follow what our parents uh, wanted from us, wanted us to do, wanted, you know, they always want you to become something, someone, uh, you know, that is going to be maybe successful, but it's their perception. And it's not necessarily who you want to become or what's going to really benefit you or what's going to make you happy and fulfilled. So I think this is like uh, an extremely important thing for most people. Uh, to discover because if you think about it most people um, are unhappy in their lives there's something like 80% of people who are not satisfied with their jobs and you know that just shows how most people never actually find what they want to do they never discover who they are and um, yeah I mean that's pretty sad. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, again, the 
whole um, purpose of the book is basically to help people kind of figure out where they're at in life, what they want to do, what their purpose is, and then also, um, you know, helping them learn different skills um, to where they can build off of so that they can create this life that, you know, is truly fulfilling for them. Um, I think also the, the challenging thing for a lot of people who read personal development books is you know there's one thing is reading the book and uh, going through the theory or reading the techniques but then the second thing is actually having that self-discipline to keep trying these exercises and you know it's like two different things right it's yeah, definitely. I mean, you can read one thing a thousand times, but if you're not implementing and taking action, then, um, you know, it's not really working. But I'm a huge believer that, you know, if you believe it, you can achieve it, but you also have to take action. So it's totally up to the person to, you know, make themselves a priority and realize that, like, you know, if I want to create a better life for myself, I have to take action. I have to do the work. And this is, you know, the gritty part of it all. But, you know, this is how you create results and how you change and transform yourself in your life. And, um, you know, for people who procrastinate, who might not uh, be as strong to, you know, have that self-discipline to work on their own, what would you tell them? Um, you know, there's, I see it quite a lot with people who, uh, they are not really willing to teach themselves, you know, just they prefer to maybe take a course or work with someone else who is pushing them, who is, so they become accountable to the other person. You know, most people prefer that. Um, it's always when you try to learn something new, it's challenging, you know, you have to have patience and all these kind of things. And a lot of people have struggle with that. Do you have any tips for people who... I mean, again, I think with procrastination, it's just us voiding um, to, you know, get to the next level. And the mm -hmm. simplest thing you can do for that is basically um, start with small action steps and then, um, you know, start like doing those on a daily basis and then eventually you'll kind of go through whatever you're procrastinating but also like prioritizing so you know um i think a lot of us create a to-do list we put like 10 to 15 items on there and then we kind of beat ourselves up for only getting three to five items done but like realistically if you create if you complete three to five tasks that are the most important, you're actually still getting a lot done. So it's not about, you know, completing the to-do list. It's about prioritizing what's important, taking action on that. And then, um, you know, after that, like, if you continue doing this on a daily basis, you're going to get from where you are to where you want to be. And it's just like taking small steps one by one by one. And then finally you arrive somewhere. Yeah, which again is um, the basis of the hero's journey. You know, it's like arriving, going on this journey, but arriving back home. So coming back home to celebrating who you are, to sharing your gifts and sharing your message with the world. Um, and why do you think the hero's journey is appearing in people's lives and stories and myths and everything? What do you think? Um, is this some kind of universal life cycle of you know someone who is trying to become someone else i think um you know the concept of the hero's journey is like really something to inspire all of us it is a common theme not only you know in mythology but in all of these like superhero um, movies and everything like that and i think it's like it obviously it's something that reflects you know life in general because we all go through this process where you know, um, it's like the transformation of a butterfly, right? The butterfly mm. starts off like as a little, I forget what they're called. <laughs> um, in English. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts as some little thing like an egg or something. Then it turns into a cocoon and then it transforms into a butterfly. So that's basically, you know, the hero's journey is about turning into that butterfly or the hero within or whatever. Okay, so what are your um, 
you know, when the book is being launched? So the book is launching on May 18th and it's going to be available on Amazon. Uh, Kindle paper version as well? It's going to be available copy. in both. Okay. Um, what about Audible? I like to listen to audiobooks. Um, if I get enough people who want an Audible version, then I will create one. But in the meantime, I don't have an Audible version. Um, so w what are your plans for this year and also f for the next five years? Where do you see yourself a couple of years from now like <laughs> in terms of your business, coaching, um, and, you know, things you work on? Um, I mean, I definitely know that there's a second book that I'm going to write to um, follow my first book. And it's basically just a continuation of my journey as well as more exercises for um, people to kind of develop and learn. And, um, you know, I want to continue growing my coaching and my therapy business. It's something I'm really passionate about. So I definitely um, imagine like myself doing speaking events or hosting my own events, doing workshops and things like this to just help people mm -hmm. um, tap into their p potential and get to the next level in their life. Um, what would you say, because I, I know a lot of people who want to try these kind of uh, therapies um, like hypnosis or rapid transformational therapy, uh, they think you have to be actually present with a practitioner, but actually you do it online as well. Is there a difference when you work with someone through Zoom or Skype or something like that? Do you think, uh, you know, a lot of people are skeptical because they think it's going to work better if you're present in the room with them? Yeah, I mean, 95% of my patients are basically online. So there's no difference whether you're not uh, working together in person or whether you're working online. It really um, doesn't matter because the practice and the therapy is the same. And as long as I can um, see their face and they can hear my voice, that's all that's needed for the therapy to work over the Internet. And the results are just the same. Um, and... Um like finally, one thing you would like to share with anyone who is struggling with their personal growth or, you know, uncovering their personal development journey. Is there anything like you have some tip or uh, wor words of wisdom or some? <laughs> Um, I mean, there's definitely two things that I've learned over the years and um, more so this last year. But, um, you know, basically the first thing is resilience. So, you know, um, being resilient through whatever it is that you're going through and continuing to um, move forward no matter what happens. So basically never giving up. When I was, you know, um, younger and like a teenager, like, I did everything and I would give up like right away. So um, this was a skill that I really had to build up to where I was, you know, consistently taking action every day. So, you know, being resilient is it's not just, um, you know, powering through everything, but also like realizing that, you know, um, you can achieve what you want, but sometimes it might take time. So you just have to, you know, allow yourself to enjoy the journey along the way. And then the other thing, too, is also surrendering to the journey, which is basically what I just said, you know, letting yourself um, enjoy the process of undoing, you know, um, past hurts or pains and then allowing yourself room to grow into who you are meant to be. And surrendering is basically just giving up control because we really don't have control anyways. Mm. And I think a lot of us kind of get stuck in this um area where we're so fixed on like if things don't turn out the way we want mm. then this is the end this is you know the worst thing that could happen but in reality um, the only thing that is constant is change so if you remember that stay resilient and just surrender to the journey you're going to get to where you want to be yeah um you know i think a lot of us fixate on some kind of outcomes or what we think it's the right thing and very often life has a different path for us and if we allow it it actually 
create something even better that we were not, you know, we couldn't even come up with like this kind of solutions. And what you said about resilience also, I think it's extremely important. And I actually did a video about a similar topic recently. A lot of people kind of, you know, give up too easily, I think. And, uh, you know, like if you think about life is constant struggle and going through failures, smaller failures, bigger failures. So if you want to really, um, you know, live the life to the full, you have to just get used to, to having these failures and keep trying because, you know, any process of learning or becoming something or someone will require trial and error, try things, try things, try things, and that's how you learn. That's how you know what to not do or what to do and all this kind of stuff. So I think this is uh, something that people forget. You know, people want to try start a new business or maybe a new journey or losing weight, whatever it is that you want to have or change in your life. And, um, you know, gonna try one time, three times, five times, doesn't then work out and then you kind of give up. And I think that's a big mistake, you know, it's instead just maybe take a break and try again. You know, if it doesn't work out, try again. And finally, you're gonna probably get where you wanna be. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay, thanks for um, sharing with us your wisdom and <laughs> Um, thanks for checking out our first episode and until next time.